Hey, 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 what's happening, y'all? We got a brand new episode of The Strange Road back for you. We have an excellent, excellent interview for you guys. I'm your host, Mikey, and of course, as always, the bro host with a mo host, Bob. <laughs> That Bob, how a, you doing tonight? I like that. That was good. <laughs> the I got him on that one. That was good. I'm uh, great. And of course, as Appreciate always, it. we have Stoner and Disbro holding it down tonight in Master Control. We got the A team of all A teams. Yeah, we got it as usual. Fully loaded. Um, as always, you guys can find us at the Strange Road on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. The Strange Road Podcast Group is rocking and rolling. We've just had, I don't know how many new. Uh, People joining the Facebook group. We have a lot of new members. It's rocking go. and rolling. I'm glad to hear that. Um, we always got great stuff coming out on Instagram, TikTok. Make sure you guys just, you know, check out of the short videos and clips that we've got going. Go back all the way back through our page. There's some entertaining stuff in there. We try. I think you guys like. So We try. You should check uh, it out. Like, sh share, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell there on YouTube. Uh, if you like this episode, share it, review it, five stars or bust on yep. Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It really does help help us quite a bit. You know, it's visibility. Th there's these charts, you know, then and people rank this stuff, and and I, apparently it, it really people go to charts to find new podcasts. True. From what I've been told, I used. That's to. not how I've found out about podcasts, I, but I used to. You know. Sure. Definitely did. Definitely New to did. me. Uh, but I go to that thing in the mall when you're trying to find out where you're at. That has all the, mall, you know, I, 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 I like things absolutely. like that. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, let's dive right in tonight. I am so, so, so stoked for this episode. We're going to get into some of the sync ups that allowed this to happen. I was about to say, can I just say real quick, <laughs> Mikey's, been pulling, get... Mikey's been pulling rabbits out of his hat like it's his <laughs> job. And I didn't know he knew that trick, but he just keeps fishing these. Hey, you're never going to guess how I did that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even want to try to guess anymore. I'm just happy hearing the stories. Let's get after yeah, it. Yeah, and this, this is a good one. I love it. Um, I'm just going to jump right in. Let's welcome our guest, Matthew Jackson. Matthew, what is up, man? Thank you for coming on The Strange Road. We appreciate the hell out of you. Man, I appreciate you guys having me on. Do you give me a chance to talk and have this conversation? I always look forward to it. I mean, I... Uh, you've kind of hit the bottom of the barrel in the paranormal world because you met, you found me. <laughs> no, uh, no way, are. no way. Not from what I've seen, bro. Not from what I've seen. <laughs> Not from no, what I've seen great, at man. all. <laughs> Not at all, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm really excited that we found each other, to be honest, because I'm uh, already a fan. So let's, yeah. let's do this. Matthew, yeah. introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you've been up to, and then we can maybe hop into how we synced up and and – we're sitting here right now chatting. Yeah. Uh, so I guess everybody has an origin story, right? And mine is really, really strange because I'm not, I mean, I was a weird kid growing up. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a given. But uh, as far as like my interest in the paranormal, I was raised in a very strict religious household. So everything was Satan and demons. And I had you know, besides my love of horror movies and monsters, you know, as a young adult, uh, seeking and delving into the paranormal was nothing that I was entertained by, you know. Right. And it was like the summer of 2003, uh, a friend of mine, he had purchased this house. And uh, my friend, let me preface this by saying that he was like a, a devout atheist. So he did not believe in anything spiritual at all. And when he bought this house... Um, the first time he had me come over to check it out, uh, I noticed there was this faint pink stain around like every window. And so after noticing it, this in a few rooms, I was like, hey, man, what what is up with this, you know, this uh, stain around your windows? And he started laughing and he said, well, the people who lived here previously thought the house was haunted. And oh, he laughed. Yeah, he laughed and he said they had some cleansing ritual done and whatever they put around the windows, like, you know, ah. sealed that. Yeah, and he just thought it was a pain in the butt because he's going to have to repaint every room, essentially. And he laughed, I laughed, didn't think much about it. And probably like six months into him living there, he's like, uh, by the way, my house, freaking haunted. <laughs> and, and he had like all these strange experiences and oh. his, his brain. His brain was wired differently than most people because it wasn't like he was scared. He was more agitated that uh, his his roommates weren't paying rent. 
mm-hmm. and they were moving things around on him. And this was a single male OCD, you know, everything was in order. And so the strange stuff was happening and he just found it frustrating. Huh. So <laughs> summer of 2000. That's yeah. your worst thing. I just want to say real quick, yeah. we do this to my mother because she has OCD. Oh, yeah. So we'll move things around in her house <laughs> just because then she'll go back and go. Ah, dang it. You know, it's yeah. like the, the picture finder where something's not the same and she has to go back. So we do that just for fun. Not a lot anymore, mom. Sorry. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Too funny. So, yeah. So it was summer of 2003. Uh, he had me over because that was the summer that Mars was really, really visible in the Ooh. sky. Oh. And, and this, yeah, this guy had a massive, like $10,000 telescope on his back deck that, oh. I mean, He's a single attorney. He had nothing better to do besides spend money, right? So he invited me over to look at Mars. And, you know, this is a rural area that I live in, in Indiana. And uh, so there's no, like, uh, light pollution whatsoever. And we were there just taking turns looking through the telescope. And there was one other uh, gal that was there with us. And at some point, I had a glass of water. And I set it down on the floorboard behind me. And and the sky was so starry that you could see everything i mean there was nothing you were it's not like we're in pitch blackness i mean it was very very light from all the stars and my buddy was sitting across the deck looking through the telescope and i was standing next to the female and anyway all of a sudden i heard something whisper in my ear and i thought she had said something to me and so i leaned towards her and asked her you know uh, what did you say and she had the same experience she heard the whisper between us and she leaned to me at the same time and so we had this moment of you know excuse me and then all of a sudden something took that uh glass of water that i had and the best way i can describe it is that like punt kicked it and it went like straight up in the air and tumbled end end over end and splashed water all over both of us and yeah and our our moment of pardon me what did you say turned into holy shit what was (laughs) that you know and my buddy who was sitting across the deck you know looking through his telescope he never even looked up he just he was like oh that's just the ghost that kind of stuff happens all the time scared me to death and I shortly thereafter made my exit and got the hell out of there. And I really thought about it hard for the next few days, trying to figure out like what that experience even, you know, what the implications were for that experience. And so I, I got a hold of him and I started talking to him about it. And I was like, you know, so tell me, tell me about this ghost thing some more, you know? And he started telling me the history of the property and it clicked in my head because I knew exactly what he was talking about. Back in 1970, uh, November 18th, there was a fire in Brown County, Indiana, uh, you know, outside the town of Nashville. And in that fire was found the body of a man. And the, the it was presumed to be the homeowner and his wife survived this fire. And she tried to claim insurance, you know, the life insurance policy on her dead husband. Oh, boy. well, the... Yeah. And it turned out to be insurance. It was fraud and murder, homicide. Uh, They picked up a vagrant. They poisoned this guy and they set the garage on fire and they tried to make it look like it was this man by the name of Clarence Roberts. Well, and I knew this story well because uh, my grandpa was friends with Clarence Roberts. Actually, even even with his wife, my grandmother, they knew Clarence and Geneva Roberts very well. And so then I felt like I had this like personal connection with this this event that happened. And uh, so for 10 years, Geneva Roberts fought the insurance company because they didn't want to pay out because there was enough questionable evidence about the fire and the corpse that they didn't really think it was this man Clarence. So for 10 years, she fought the insurance companies. They wouldn't pay, and they she finally just lost, and it was never going to happen. So almost 10 years to the day of the first fire, there was a second fire in a different home in, uh, in uh, Brown County. And in that fire, there were two bodies, and they were positively ID'd as Clarence and Geneva Roberts. So then it dawned on me, like, so possibly the victim of the homicide was that who whispered in my ear hmm. what did he what did he say 
And, you know, and it sent me down this rabbit hole of, you know, what makes a haunting, uh, you know, uh, if what's the connection between like tragedies and, and hauntings and what makes a ghost. And then it's like when I really delved into that story and it's like nobody knows who this man was to this day. They still don't know who it is. And it's like, it just kind of made me sick. And it was a, a, a punch in the gut thinking, maybe this guy tried to tell me his name. You know what I mean? And like, is there any way to that maybe I, that I could have like recorded his voice or, or heard his voice and been able to like help this person, you know? And so that sent me into just like studying and reading, you know, about the paranormal and, and, and you know, reading books, I actually read books, guys. And um, <laughs> it's not a bad time, is it? <laughs> it's yeah. not a bad time. You get the right books. books it's not a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. So it was probably yeah. So it was probably about two uh, uh, 2012. I started actively like going on investigations. I, I teamed up with some some guys who had some experience, and it just kind of took off from from there. And through my interest in like electronic voice phenomena, yeah, uh, you know, known as EVP, uh, it, it kind of evolved and morphed. And that turns out to be actually a really big umbrella known as instrumental transcommunication, which is also, you know, abbreviated as ITC. And so anything that I could do to try to hear, I became kind of obsessive with trying to hear, figure out how to hear the quote unquote voice of a spirit or a ghost. And the funny thing about this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a skeptical believer. You know, I've had experiences, I've seen things, and I've captured all kinds of crazy things. And I still, you know, we use words like spirit and ghost and all these things to try to define, you know, the the experience. But we really can't. Those are just labels because we really can't define what any of that means. And all these years later and all my experiences and all the places I've been to, I feel like I know less now than what I did, you know, when I first thought, oh, yeah, somebody died horribly and that made a ghost. So we're going to talk to the ghost and put a nice little ribbon on it. And so through through experience, I've learned that it just doesn't quite work that way. You know, <laughs> isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's that's with so many things. You know, that's you start with an interest and then all of a sudden, you know, you're completely obsessed with ITC, which that term I had never heard of until we connected and and I started mm. looking you up a little bit. I, I, I EVPs and, you know, ghost boxes and some of those things. Uh, we went on a uh, at our buddy's mom's yeah. uh, mansion in Pickwell, Ohio. We did an amateur a lot hunt. Of, very amateur. But there was a guy that actually knew what he was doing that came. Yeah. And, you know, he had an app on his phone that was freaking me out yeah. i mean even just that was like whoa this is interesting stuff so uh, yeah. you know a lot of people kind of geek out over the gear of uh paranormal investigators oh. um you know infrared cameras and and you know just like any sasquatch hunter would with with their equipment <laughs> well, you're trying so, to figure out the best way to if there is tools. a way to measure or get some insight or re, you know make a recording of data right we need whether that's a FLIR or it's a night vision goggles or something that, you know, gets a sample or whatever it is like, you know, um, cause again, it's always about having some kind of like tangible data to go back and say, like, even with an EVP, if you get it on a recording, be, Hey, I've got this, we can look at the waveforms. We can see that it's actually occurring. Yeah. You have some tangible data. It might there go on to, well, are you really hearing what you're hearing? Do we need to go to now a, you know, um, I don't know if it's an audiologist or a linguist or some yeah. like somebody like that. To <clears throat> very, you know, but you can take that and then keep going with it. But you know, like you said earlier, when when you heard what you heard to yourself, it's like, what was I hearing? You know, without having that and having a record of it, you know, and he got obsessed and look where, where I know that's where a, you ended up. Started pulling on that thread. And Matthew, talk to a little bit about paraholics. That yeah. is your uh, paranormal investigation uh, company or group, or you guys have a, a crew of guys. Um, it, it's really just my blog okay. is the way that I've always looked at Paraholics. When I, I first started it, I actually, uh, with the first group of guys that I, I, I did investigations with, we were actually called, uh, we called ourselves Soup. Society of Unexplained Phenomena. We just thought it was that, hilarious. That's <laughs> great. We call ourselves. That's amazing. That's amazing. Jesus. Yeah. Um, I love that. And, and and that was when the real boom and like paranormal reality TV took off. And yeah. We used to 
joke about how funny it would be if uh, there was a show where they just got you know ghost hunters like loaded drunk and sent them into like you know Beverly Hills Sanatorium or something, and we're like, yeah, paraholics, like, you know, thinking we were all clever, and, That's awesome. and it's like we were coming up with like all these these characters that we would be in paraholics. And I just came up with Evil Ogleville thinking this is funny. And I went ahead and I started getting like all these domains for like paraholics because I was going to do something with it. And it started <laughs> off as like, you know, I was on Twitter just like tweeting at porn stars and just being a smart <laughs> Yeah. It was yeah. like just crazy. Like, you want to go on a ghost hunt with me? I got my moped and a six pack. And I was getting oh retweeted. God, people love called it. me. That's yeah. Awesome. And, uh, I never saw a Sasquatch, but my Aunt Patty that works at the liquor stores, like six foot nine. You know, I was just making uh-huh. that stuff and just being funny with it. And eventually the the guys that I were I was investigating with, they, you know, people get responsibilities and people fade and kind of go their own way. And I wasn't done. I, you know, I still had a lot of gas in the tank and passion for for investigations. And it's like, what am I gonna do? You know? And it's like, man, I have all this stuff, you know, this paraholic stuff already reserved and one day I just went legit with it and I started up my WordPress blog and and I really wanted to find a way of because uh, I, I knew, you know, the data and, and the experiences and so forth that we would have that we would have or I would have when I go out in the field. It's like, you know, I couldn't prove that I was talking to a ghost. I couldn't prove these things, but I learned that I could capture a weird experience. Experience. Mm. And so when you catch the EVP and, and you know, all the gadgets and devices that we use in, in these investigations, I mean, they, they've been hijacked from other concepts like, you know, the EMF meters and, and all these things. I mean, we're just borrowing like different thing and, you know, different devices from different industries. And, you know, originally they were kind of used for like trying to like go through someone's house and try to come up with plausible reasons on why they're explaining or experiencing the experiences that they're they're having with like feeling weird in a room and mm-hmm. then you break out your your emf detector and you find out that, that they have bad wiring in their house or something mm-hmm. like that but then when we even though emf kind of naturally <clears throat> can occur anywhere you go into a place that's completely abandoned with no electricity and you've kind of done your sweeps and you know these meters don't go off but all of a sudden the meters start going off you ask for like intelligent, like, you know, wraps on the wall. I mean, ghosts can't refuse, you know, shape and a haircut and, uh, you know, things like that. And, and then, then you, <laughs> Love that. then you can, then you capture like uh, an EVP at the same time. So all, all that's kind of cooperative, yeah. you know, and, you get this this experience that you can document, and then when you can connect it with the actual history of the location and the things that you know happened there. But then yeah. I started running, I started running into these ghost stories, and I find out that the ghost stories were made up, and yeah. the history behind them weren't real. But people, I could still go in and capture like data that kind of corroborated the ghost story, and it's like what's facilitating that you know what i mean and so it just kept snowballing and snowballing and and here i am all these years later just kind of insane <laughs> Dude, you're, i mean you are following fun. your passion that's all i can yeah. just from the little bit that we've been able to connect yeah. i mean just uh you don't sound upset with what you're doing there's a lot going on no. with with matthew i mean this is it's and, and, you know, we can Living kind of, it. and also, I mean, just the pure fact of like how we got connected, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, yourself, like we do, <clears throat> we, we run into a lot of strange people. We're, we're kind of magnets for just, even if we're not trying to, we're out on a gig or we're, it doesn't matter. We're some, yeah. Just a yeah. lightning rod does what it does. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't help it here recently has been kind of a, a, uh, has picked up in terms of the the sync ups that we've been able to have, uh, and uh, shout out to Big Bro John. Uh, yeah, my brother John is the reason why we connected. He lives in Columbus, Indiana. Sorry, blew up the spot, John. But um, <laughs> he was at the Crump Theater, which I would love for you to tell us a little bit about as well. And mm-hmm. ran into you. He's blowing me up. You got to meet this guy, Matthew. 
told him about your show. Is it cool if I send him your way? I'm like, hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He starts blowing me up with all of the paraholics and sending me links. And, and then Matthew joined our Facebook group. And then I was in the process of trying to land, uh, connecting with Ryan Singer, me and Paranormal You, a podcast, stand-up comedian, uh, and and basically realized that Matthew and Ryan have known each other for a while. Oh, wow. And uh, you guys were kind of talking to each other. Like, hey, I'm talking mm-hmm. to these strange road guys. So it was just weird how separately I was talking to Ryan and then I started talk. I was talking to you, but then I thought you had reached out to me because you knew who Ryan was or something. And then I realized, no, this is the guy my brother John was talking to me about. Yeah. So it just happened that um, it was just very, very strange. Stuff like that happens, man. Yeah. You just got to pay attention right. to it. That's right, man. Synchronicities. Uh, you know, when I was at the Crump, I uh, helped facilitate and put on this event that we called Tales from the Crump Theater. Nice. And the first half of it was uh, basically a brief kind of overview of the history of the Crump and the paranormal claims about the Crump Theater. And then we turned off the lights in the theater and made everybody sign a waiver and gave everybody flashlight and kind of let them go and explore the theater on their own. Yeah. So we told people about like that hot spots and everything. So, uh, and because of, uh, some of the stuff that I've captured down in the, uh, the basement under the stage where the old dressing rooms are for the actors, uh, the, uh, project manager for the crump, uh, does not want to go down there anymore. Thanks to me. So when we were debating, uh, because there's some areas where it just kind of needed to have, you know, you, you wanted to have someone there just to kind of watch out for people and, and make sure everybody was safe. Mm-hmm. So she made me go to the, the basement. She's like, you're the basement guy. You go down there and make sure no one falls. So I'm in the basement and there's this, all of a sudden, man, there's this big guy kind of shir- circling me like a shark. And I'm like, what, what is going on, man? And he's got, he's got his phone and he's typing and he walks up to me, man. John's like, he's, me. Like, he's intense. John, brother <laughs> John like, is intense. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's like, hey man, uh, and he tells me who is who he is, and and and, oh, and he works for the guy. Yeah, he works yeah. for the guy who essentially owns the theater. Yeah. He tells me who, who he is. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, this isn't my jam, but my my little brother, he would love this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, tell me more. And then they start telling me about the strange road and. <laughs> <laughs> he started telling me about the strange road and I was like, uh, yeah, I, I love talking to new people and podcasts. I John will talk that. to anybody. And, <laughs> <laughs> At first I thought this was going to be a ghost. So this dude, I was like, wait, what happened in the basement? And you're like, no, it's all cool. I was like, wait, no, big bro. Oh God, that was funny. <laughs> So, so he, uh, he was super excited about it and, you know, he told me about the show and, yeah, yeah, and and um, and he gave me his number. And the next day, when I went to look you guys up, I wanted to make sure I had the right podcast. And I texted him just to verify that I was connecting with the right people because I, you know, even if I never heard from you guys, I wanted to check it out. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, because he was like, maybe they could come to the Crump, and you guys could yeah. collaborate and do something sometime. And I was like, I'm game, man. I, would I mean, totally I've been trying. Like that. How far away is it? Yeah, not far in Columbus, Indiana. You know, it's. Uh, Three and a half hours, I'd say. Uh, and yeah. it's not you have a fun. theater? It's just south of Indianapolis. Okay, let's go. It's a cool yeah. little town. And dude. it's haunted? The theater's yeah. 135 years old. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's and go. And they just reopened it. Uh, John's boss bought it. Apparently, he's fixing it up. Or I, I don't know much about it. Uh, he just, I just had a flurry of messages. I just had a flurry John. of thoughts just go off in my brain of what we could do with a haunted yeah. theater of Burton doing overnight paranormal show like podcast twenty four hours. Our buddy sleeping Burton sleeping in your sleeping bag with your lav mic on. Like what the hell was that? I'm not. I don't know, bro. I told you. Like we were saying pre-show, I used to be really, really into yeah. spirits, demonology. Trying to just, I watched every document, read so much, yeah. and just really got freaked out. 
filled your and cup up a bit. Too I was much. I was full, and that's when I kind of started getting into ancient civilizations and conspir more conspirat you know, yeah. learning about how the 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 underbelly of the world works, and and <clears throat> and kind of got like went down a whole other path. Yeah. But was always still interested from time to time of of looking into well, you know hauntings and stuff. And this kind of dovetails mm -hmm. into what you were saying earlier of like you're like the strange road. You guys cover this, and you cover that, and you cover like. Yeah. We ping pong around and we've we're you know, all we've, we've we're circulated all, yeah. so many different interests and 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 that's why it's like yeah like there it's almost like getting a um but, a, a desire for a certain food or flavor right you're like man I just really want pizza night or a burger or a steak it's yeah. like I just really want yeah. some paranormal stuff right now and when he said we were doing this is like all right like we got no it's coming up on Halloween like this is perfect yeah. like yeah. that's what we need <clears throat> I well, mean the uh, oh, go ahead no you you. The uh, so my my profession is I, I cut hair. I own a hair salon downtown Columbus, Indiana, and so yeah, I, yeah, I started cutting hair <clears throat> professionally in 1993. And the very first thing that the the salon I started working in, the very first thing they had me get involved in for charity was giving away free, well, you know, for donation haircuts to help save the crump. Wow, that's oh, how man. long. That's how long saving the crump has been happening. Wow, for, you know, yeah. So we're talking like thirty some years. They've been trying to save this theater, <laughs> and uh, it eventually got shut down. It was completely shut down for about ten years. And I have brought up to like the city of Columbus a number of times, like, hey, if you really want to save a building, uh, paranormal investigations is a viable yeah. revenue stream. And I said, you know, you it, it, the only thing that's good for is basically preserving historic structures and uh, preserving history. I mean, that's the biggest thing that we do. We keep people interested yeah. in, in, in places like that. And from coast to coast to coast, you know, ghost hunting has saved tons of structures. Sure. And the Mansfield you know, Reformatory no, here in oh, Ohio. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That prison Mansfield, would be tore Mansfield, down if it didn't have history like that. That would have been gone. Yeah. The, even yeah. with... Even the, with the Shawshank. It would have been gone yeah. after that. Because yeah. every so, year there's something going on there and there's, you know, ghost tours and you can go yeah. through it and they have music out there. They have rock, some kind of like heavy yeah, metal concerts. show out there and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in that place. That place is freaky deaky, man. I have not yet. Yeah. But uh, so I, I finally, this the project manager that's there now, uh, I met with her over a year ago. And, and I, I was introduced to her actually through another comedian, the guy who introduced me to Ryan Singer, another is synchronicity Ryan. there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I approached her and I was like, hey, you know, I know you're trying to you know do fundraising. But at that point, they were really restricted on being able to let very many people in the building. And I was like, when this thing opens up, you should really consider, you know, this. And she's like, you know, that's the first thing that people ask me. Is this place haunted? Is this, you know, and people are super curious. And she knew there was a demand because that she was she was getting emails and, right. and people hitting her up on it. Yeah. So I basically my goal was to uh, lay out the template for her to be able to take it. And when the building opened to kind of run with it to help pump, pump money into the uh, to the theater in a safe and respectful way. So uh, but in doing so, she allowed me to come in on my own and start to investigate and research the, the history of the building and so forth. So when we did open it up. Uh, I, it was really important to me to present the factual history of the building before, you know, the TikTokers got in there and were, were being chased by demons. So I wanted oh, wow. to try to, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I really wanted to lay like a foundation yeah. uh, because the, the building was significant in my childhood and, and it means a lot to the, the people in Columbus. There's not a little old lady, you know. Uh, above the age of 80 that didn't make out for the first time in the balcony of that place. So <laughs> Right. You respect it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I found just some fascinating, crazy history out about the place that had never really been told before. And so uh, that's why I was really excited when they were able to open up and we started with the Tales of the Crump event. I got to mm -hmm. put up my blog with all the history. And yeah, so I'm I'm really hoping it works out to be a huge benefit for the the theater. So I'm gonna keep plugging events there myself and 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 try to keep it uh, keep it going. 
I'll tell you what, Dude, yeah. we should I'd, totally go to Indiana. I was about to say, it's a no-brainer. We need to do that. We need to just take a road trip, yeah. head to Indiana, hang, hang out, out with Big Bro. put on an event there. Let's get after it. Yeah, absolutely. That would be so much well, fun. When when you guys, when we played my uh, video here in a bit, you're going to see a couple of clips from the Crump. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you'll, you'll see on there um, the name Colonel Keith pop up a few times. And Colonel Keith was a... Yeah, Colonel Keith was a Civil War veteran who, uh, after the Civil War, he became an attorney. And he was, he was, uh, his reputation was he was the best, one of the best criminal attorneys in Southern Indiana. But he also had some post-traumatic stress disorder and he had some, he had some problems from the war. And anyway, he built a building uh, called Keith's Arcade. And I think it was called an arcade because of just the arches. They that's how they described buildings back then mm-hmm. as arcades. Mm-hmm. They didn't have Pac-Man mm-hmm. or anything. But anyway, uh, so Keith's law office was in the arcade. And anyway, um, at one point he kind of like loses his mind when he's on a train uh, and he thinks the the South is coming to get him. And he pulls out his revolver and he like starts shooting. And he shot a guy a couple times. And uh, he got locked up in a uh, an insane asylum. And so while he was locked up, all of his assets went up for auction and a, a guy by the name of like Francis and John Crump uh, bought Keith's Arcade and they built the opera house off the back side of it. So the front half of the Crump is actually closer to about 150 years old and the mm-hmm. theater itself is like 134. Mm-hmm. So it's been remodeled and, and just redone multiple times over the decades. And so I was kind of the one of the first people to kind of look at the Keith's Arcade era of the Crump Theater. And that's where I started finding out this fascinating history about, you know, his daughter had a mysterious death. You know, he shot the guy on the train and there's all, all kinds of uh, just it should be a movie when you really look at the Colonel Keith you know, story and, and his daughter made Dean the Hill and her death i mean it's some crazy stuff wow. and so when i first started going in and investigating that the project manager had heard about you know this colonel keith maybe shooting a guy and I, that's when i started digging and i started getting these evp responses and everything about colonel keith and that's why really like i started i, I focused on that that time period of that structure and so it's like i I feel like i've not even started to peel back the layers of like the opera house itself because i've been so fixated on just the front half of the crown because it seems to be what really triggers activity in that Mm. building so it's been a really fun investigation Hmm. wow that's incredible um i would love to get to your video here in a minute but i think uh i would like just for you to talk a little bit more about uh, ITC and mm-hmm. some of the technology that in this video we're going to see. And we were kind of scoping around on your website and stuff like that. And some of these devices are super rad, dude. Um, and yeah. you'll see some in the videos. Right. But if you kind of want to just talk a little bit about – and then I know that you're using some kind of software as well in conjunction mm-hmm. with different uh, audio equipment – um, and I know our guy, Matthew, uh, Matthew Disbro here in Master, Master Control uh, is going to be interested in this. So oh, yeah. I want to I want to hear a little bit about that because it's fascinating <clears throat> okay. stuff. Yeah. So, you know, e- EVPs, uh, ITC, uh, I mean, they really kind of go hand in hand because when uh, people started realizing as recording equipment. I mean, there were rumors of like Tom Edison, you know, trying to design a, a telephone to the dead and, and things like that. Whoa. Uh, and, that That's one. like some Andy Warhol type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's always stories of, of people trying to contact, you know, spirits in the spirit world. And there was a, uh, the guy who was really credited for being like the, uh, the forefather for electronic voice phenomena was a guy by the name of Frederick Jurgensen. And the story goes that he was basically out. Uh, this is like 1958, 59, I believe he was out trying to record bird songs. And he believed that he heard the voice of his mother. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and so he, he just he kind of went down the rabbit hole with it, and he started set, setting up experiments, trying to you know capture more of these voices that he couldn't explain. And he would let his recorder like run in his house, and he he captured like I think the voice of his father giving his dog uh, commands and and so forth. Wow! And then as he kept working on the technique, 
uh, 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 supposedly, I believe like a spirit or medium told him that he needed to add a radio to the experiment. So he would take a microphone and he would take a radio and set it to like a static station. So no, no radio station, just, right. you know, uh, white. Noise. And that seemed to provide more material for spirits to manipulate, to be able to mm. construct speech. And so through the years, I mean, he just, you know, captured just hundreds of thousands of recordings and other people, he started learning about his work and he, he put out books and it kind of took off from there. And so you take that momentum and you fast forward to about 2002, 2003, a man by the name of Frank Sumption uh, was obsessed with talking to aliens. And uh, oh, Frank, I want to yeah. talk to that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you'd have to through one of his devices. Yeah, he had. probably dead. Figured. <laughs> well, let's hang out with. Matt but I, I think I've heard from Frank. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so Frank came up with this idea of of taking the concepts of providing uh, like raw audio for uh, you know for communication purposes. So taking bits of, you know, radio stations, white noise and, and messing with the voltage of the device to make it real kind of, uh, uh, unpredictable in the way that it would move. And these devices were made to like sweep the frequency bands at a very high rate. So uh, if it would land on a station or a, a frequency that had a station, it would just kind of like buzz by it without stopping. And so you would just get this cacophony of, of, of noise. And he thought that he was hearing voices through this and he kept building these devices where he felt like he was making communication with an intelligent consciousness. And so uh, he was a little surprised as he made these boxes, the boxes started telling him who to give his devices to. So Frank would build these boxes and he would gift them to people. And he was really surprised when people were taking them and they were using them for the purposes of ghost hunting instead of like talking to aliens so eventually frank i think kind of bought in and he became the like the uh, the godfather of uh, ghost boxes and so um it's you know the, the marriage of you know evp radio uh, i mean a, a lot of uh, a lot of people still to this day i mean the original practice was a non-sweeping device which they taught they called direct radio voice where they would just have it set to the different frequencies and like the frederick yergerson they had certain frequencies that they preferred that they found they had mo more success with that they would get voices from the dead and so there there's you know a very long uh, complicated history with uh, uh, ITC in general, but it all EVP basically would not happen without radio. It all kind of goes together. And so all the devices that I use are basically based off of the, um, um, you know, the Frank Sumption uh, ghost box type of uh, device. And so, you know, these I've, I've, I've created a really neat network of a lot of these builders and they know that I'm going to respect their work and I'm going to try to uh, present it in the best way that I can with my sessions and the way that I present their work. And so I've, I've got a really unique friendship with a lot of the builders and I've been hooked up massively off and on through the years with some really unique devices. Uh, I've owned boxes from about every prominent builder out there. And most of the boxes that I own, I, I would call like boutique boxes. I right. mean, there are some mass produced boxes that you, that you see like on the ghost hunting shows, like the PSB seven that you always see is Zach Baggins, you know, you know, going around with, I mean, those, those are kind of like the, the mainstream, but you know, mine are actually handmade by, you know, people and their intentions go into the boxes. And then I take them and, and just do my experience experiments with them. And, and a lot of these guys are real clever. They try to do things to make them more, um, you know, like harder to debunk. So they come up with like different type of effects that, uh, like if you have a, a box that's really rich with like reverb or something, but you get a response that's like intelligent, direct, and devoid of the effects, you know, it makes it more uh, interesting. Or a, a lot of my favorite thing that I do right now is like reverse speech where the audio coming out of the device is like taking snippets of the of the radio and reversing the speech oh before goodness. it comes out the speaker. 
so when you hear something that comes out in the forward speech, it potentially could be anomalous. So it, it's things like that that really get me excited. And when you get like, you know, responses like Colonel Keith and stuff like this coming at you when you're in the location, it's like, what's happening, you know? Wow. So what you mean with certain boxes is basically you're setting up these <clears throat> hoops and ladders for them to jump through and climb over to sure. get a message across if that's what's really going across. Like what you say, you're trying to make it like debunk proof, right? It's like to make sure it's put that radio. reverb on because if the voice comes through without that reverb effect, it means it has gotten past all of your controls, right? Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Dude, when and, he says and, boutique boxes, you got to see these things. I would love They to. are works of art. I believe it. I was yeah. blown away. Remember I'm like, beautiful. who is making If you want to shout anybody out, I don't know if they want to be known or we <laughs> blow up their spot or whatnot, but I mean, I think they deserve a lot of credit. It's cool. Because they're, art, they're yeah. works of art. They're I, beautiful. Yeah, they are. Yeah, some of them definitely are. Um, the, but yeah, you're, you're, you're right on as far as like, you know, I kind of have, like I said, I'm a skeptical believer, so I don't want it to be like super easy too. No. And that's why like some, the software that I use that you, you brought up are just like phonetic generators to where there's no word banks in it at all. It's just like, fuh, ruh, duh. And to get like full sentences coming out of some of those even. I mean, some of the ITC apps are very credible. Most of them aren't, but a lot of them really are. So I'm very careful with what I work with and how I present it and try to do it the best way possible. So there's, uh, and transparent, you know, that's always been really yeah. important to me. Yeah. Take us down the road a little bit. How do you work with the, in conjunction with the software and, and the box? Or, you know, we could watch the video. We can kind of talk about that as, as we're kind of going on, too, because it, it all kind of merges into. Yeah, yeah I, I got to say, I'm uh, again, I know Bo Diddley but, about it. And also, if you have anything else you want to share with us about the crump or anything before we play the video. Anything that okay. we missed that you really want to talk about. I mean, obviously, the floor is yours, brother. Well, uh, one thing I will say before we play the video is you'll see a marriage in the video of me doing se sessions in like, quote unquote, haunted locations. And then you'll see sessions where um, I, I call them more like controlled sessions mm -hmm. and I call them my my cabin sessions. So I, every now and then I do this this thing where I hook up a bunch of my devices together here in my, I, I live in a log cabin in the, in the woods in Brown County, Indiana. So uh, I barely get any radio signal down here at all, but I have uh, a couple ghost boxes that seem to respond pretty well. And I mix all these devices together and I try to, I, I'll go through a period of like, you know, once a week or maybe monthly where I'll do a session at the same time and I'll ask the same questions and uh, and then that at the end of my you know my my sessions, I tried to take all that data and see if there's any like uh, you know answers that came through that were consistent or you know questions that that they were willing to answer versus questions that they weren't. So you'll see you'll see in the video clip there's some you know they'll say cabin sessions and everything's in reverse speech. I got an actual human skull sitting there because I ask I, I own a human skeleton. I uh, uh, ask about like, you know, even questions about the skeleton. You know, I had like a whole list. I call it my weirdo sessions. I ask about all these theological concepts, you know, ancient civilizations, Whoa, uh, Sasquatch, cryptids. Yeah. I went down the rabbit hole. Love it. Anything weird, anything weird I could think of because I didn't want to talk about ghosts. I didn't want to really talk about hauntings. I wanted right. to talk about like, if I'm dealing with an intelligence that you know, my cabin's not haunted. So if I'm dealing with an intelligence that can like, you know, beam in and talk to me wherever I'm at, you know, let's, let's figure out, let's see what they have to say, you know, you know, instead of, you know, ghost hunters that go into haunted locations, it's always like, tell me about that one time you died. I mean, like <laughs> if ghosts are real, that that's their favorite thing to talk about. Yeah. Uh, one time they died. It's a little touchy you know? subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I've I've tried to think big and out of the box with all the stuff. Just to see yeah, man, I very creative. I must say, I've never heard of any paranormal investigator doing that ever. Right. Like that's very very unique. Um, I mean, you're just really, you know, the way you're. It's almost you know an experiment, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. That's yeah. what you're doing out there. Is just yeah, basically. <clears throat> hey, let's move out of this supposed haunted place and see if we can't 
find something in a normal RF free environment in the cabin in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Yeah, and that's what the we were talking. Uh, I think before we start recording about Obscura Vox, my new site that I'm starting. It's it's going to be mainly all about just ITC work and kind of moving away from just like the haunted theory and locations. And I'm still going to do that sometimes too. I still have tons of friends I love to network with, and I'll still do that some on the side. But my main focus is going to be on you know these devices and um, you know th- th- there's so much potential that it's just I don't think it's even began to be uh tapped into so i'm i'm pretty excited about it that's awesome i'm stoked about yeah. that because i feel like when we <clears throat> kind of got back into the whole podcasting world you know a little while back we we're like man it's really you know sasquatch is picking up and Dogman's picking up and parent you know <clears throat> like you're saying you're like it feels like these things aren't going away it was like maybe they were a fad back in the day this and that you know no i think what people did they just we we stuck to what we like or you know what we no more uh, uh, closely, and, and again, for us, like, we touch on all kinds of things for yourself, too, it seems like, and I think a lot of that, what people thought would die off, like even Sasquatch and things of that nature, even, go, no, like, we're going to keep going, like, we think people are going to stop pursuing these endeavors or trying to figure out if there are actual, you know, spirits, <clears throat> entities, can, I don't think anybody's ever, it, Unless we get some proof unequivocally that your research goes well, all of it, yeah, it's just because of uh, cosmic radiation or something, what, whatever kind of crazy scientific explanation they might blow out there. But, you know, it's going to take some kind of weird act to to stop it because I think they're, they're again, for as much as we know, we don't know anything. Yeah. Right? I think there was an article <clears throat> that came out this past summer about scientists, like at a certain point up in the atmosphere, they were picking up what they felt were like voices and chattering. Whoa. And yeah, and they, uh, they of course, they've tried to come up with reasons on why they're hearing voices at this certain, you know, uh, you know, um, elevation. But, you know, it just kind of makes you wonder what the implications of all this might ultimately mean, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And it all yeah. ties together, man. I mean, the more people we interview, and we're still a young show, right? And it's already yeah. the th- dots that have connected that weave back together. The yeah. people that we've been able to say, "Hey, we talked to this guy about this," but then this guy talked, and this connects over here, and it, it's just like never ending. I mean, that's kind of really the people listening and the connections that we're making with people that lead to another thing that then we get to go hear about that thing and then it just it never ends it's just no, like and it's only building you. right yeah and i mean you do you think you have unequivocal proof or at least with these devices i mean you seem pretty confident you're still going trying to get more data of course but um mm-hmm. in your opinion these devices are you capturing the process of getting it especially in the cabins and so forth is it something that is to to your mind to your heart this is a spirit or this is you know have in your heart have you come to that conclusion personally i know that i'm interacting with something because yeah. i've uh, you know you don't you don't get cussed out over the am band you don't get those types of that type of language coming through and <laughs> knowing the speed Knowing the speed that some of my devices are sweeping at, I know that I'm not getting, you know, bits of like a Coca-Cola commercial and confusing that with, okay. you know, something, you know what I mean? Yep, so, 100%. Uh, I, yeah, I, I feel like I'm definitely uh, tapping into something, you know, something intelligent. And a lot of times it even feels like it's open mic night. Uh, it's it's like I, I tell people, like, if if uh, you turn a light on and, you know, it's like moths to a flame, you know, if you if you take a Ouija board out to a cornfield and you fire it up, the next thing you know, you summon Beelzebub, does that mean the cornfield was haunted? Probably not, but, you know, I think that we have a frequency to our intentions that whatever it is that uh, will contact us, I think it will find you if you go looking for it. And so the the, the devices are just kind of like a vehicle for that. But as far as like scientific proof, as long as, 
you know, these devices are like, you know, tapping into radio signals. You know, most scientists are still going to be very dismissive of of it. And, you know, I and I know guys, you know, colleagues of mine that are now using just simply white noise generators that are having direct intelligent replies. And it's like there's no radio involved in that at all. So mm. not, a, not even the radio set to like a static station. We're talking white noise generators. Mm. And that to me is just mind blowing to get, you know, intelligent responses that way. And the prevailing thought seems to be that these voices exist through the electromagnetic fields. And so you think about, you know, if ghosts are real, obviously great, great, great grandma has no vocal cords at this point. And so if she's energy and they're manipulating energy, uh, it's feasible that through white noise, static, you know, RF, you know, whatever it is, that there is potential for something strange to happen. And when you have strange experiences and you're able to capture and record that, I mean, I I can't define it, but it happened. It's weird. This is the, how I present it. And I, I kind of got over trying to think I needed to uh, change anybody else's mind because mm-hmm. I'm having so much fun doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And places that's gotten me into and the, the cool people I've gotten to, you know, talk to about this, like you guys. And uh, so I'm, I'm having a great time. So uh, it doesn't really matter to me at the end of the day, uh, you know, my body of work, I just wanted to represent that, man, that guy busted his ass, you know, and, and, oh, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm doing it, you know, you're definitely doing it. I mean, I, color me impressed because again, like, yeah, you are, I don't I'm not even asking the questions. You're checking them off as you're going through with it to the point of <laughs> that where it never happens. I, I don't even, yeah, I don't even need to ask you the questions like, well, what if it is a random radio signal that you're just catching? Like you said, a Coca-Cola commercial, this, that, a, a random TV signal bouncing off and forth because most people, and I'll try to be as nice as I can about that. Most people don't conceive that we're so bombarded. There's radio waves going around us right now through this room, TV, you know, we are constantly surrounded by this soupiness of frequencies. Soup? Yeah. And so <laughs> it's a perfect area, though, too, because, again, like to your point of, you know, when, we, when we're not here anymore, what do we become? Well, we, theoretically, you can't get rid of energy. You, it doesn't dissipate. It, you know, it goes somewhere. So what form of energy would be able to affect that? And in that, you know, radio frequency spectrum, things like that, and and. I just think you have such a good take on it already, and you do have all those kind of just like said check boxes of like some receipts. There's not even been a point where I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to ask you on this and see if I nope, no, yeah, you're doing well, good work. A, hey, thank you, man. There's a lot of like people in the ghost hunting uh, community that don't accept ITC work as valid. Hmm. And my, my pushback to them has always been like, well, if your EVP is proof that you've communicated with a ghost, how come you're not on the cover of Time Magazine because you've proven that there's life after death? Right. So in, in, in my mind, you know, all of our data right now kind of weighs the same. And, you know, just because you can tell me how something works doesn't mean you can explain away the experience that I had. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of where I'm at with it at yeah. this point. So there's, there's a lot of equipment and things out there that I think are junk. But at the same time, because of all the strangeness I've experienced, I would never, uh, I would never, uh, you know, completely say it's not possible for something to happen if something was there to manipulate it. Just like maybe you've seen on like the paranormal shows, like the SLS cameras, the light structured sensor cameras with that produces like the stick figures. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not. They came from like the Xbox Connect and they've adapted them to like oh, ghost hunting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think they're totally bogus. I, I owned one. I played around with it. I gave it many chances. And I feel like I I figured it out. I can make those stick figures appear against any surface anywhere that I went. And I'm like, <laughs> and but That's at perfect. the same time. Yeah, at the same time, if somebody showed me a video of one of these stick figure guys in an open area, not against a surface or like, you know, outside in a, in a field, I would have a hard time explaining how that happened, you know, right. but no, nobody's yet to show me that, that that can happen. So, But I think, again, that shows kind of like your vantage point, which is something that I think Mike and I both learned from a friend of ours is, 
you know, do we want to believe in UFOs? Do we want to believe in paranormal? Do I want to believe in unicorns? Whatever it might be. Sure, I want to believe in it. But if I go into those situations already predisposed and precharged to believe, that now I'm already excused. And it's I, not, not real. You're terrible. not doing any kind of good, solid work. And so I think with yours, the way it sounds is you come in from the onset of trying to disprove and cut down. And then you go, okay, well, that's valid. It, you know, does yeah. this actually work? Can I recreate this? Can I troubleshoot this and duplicate the stick figures, man? You know, going through that. And some people don't do that again to where you're trying to figure out, is the equipment I'm using valid? Are the methods that I'm using valid? And again, that's very scientific in nature of what you're trying to go about and how you're doing your work. So that's where I'm saying that's uh, the area I would say more people need to, you know, try to be very good about the work they're doing to put it to a level where somebody can't poke holes in it for you, you know? Right. Well, that's the difference, I think, between the paranormal field and the paranormal community. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a big segment of people who just want clicks and fame and and their TikToks to go viral. And I keep picking on TikTok for some reason. But, right. you know, it's just I, I, I have all the social media, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, Zach Baggins screaming, you know, at, at 49 years old, you know, and I've been doing this for so many years that everything scares me so much and it's a demon attacking me. You know, I know what sells and sure, I, sure. Just want, I won't sell out <clears throat> and I want to actually produce good work. And there's so many people in this that are so much, you know, they're more articulate and more technical than I am. And I've been in like my entire career in this kind of throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what comes of it. And, you know, I've, I've blown my own mind a few times, like, wow, you know, this, this is pretty amazing. So, um, that's, that's what keeps me, you know, motivated. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah, love was, your hustle. Love what you're doing. I was about to say, um, you're doing it yeah. the right way. And with all that said, I think we should watch this video. And I'm one thing, excited. One thing I would like your help with, Matthew, we do, uh, this is a YouTube show. We're a very visual show, but we also uh, have our audio version. Right. Apple, Spotify, yeah. Google, wherever you get your podcasts. And so kind of as we're going through this video, really just would love your help walking our uh, listeners through kind of what we're, what we're seeing. And I know there is some really killer audio clips as yeah, a part of this yeah. as well. Um, and so, um, yeah, let's cue that video up. And with your help, Matthew, Dude, be descriptive. help us. Uh, and even also, if you want to introduce this to us as well before we play it. Okay, this is just a, uh, a reel I put together of uh, some of my ITC clips that um, I, I thought were, you know, pretty impressive. And so this is me in various locations, including some of the cabin sessions, using some of my different devices. And um, can you guys hear the audio? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. A little loud in my headphones. Oh, it's, it's all right. Uh, I'm not hearing the Oh, you're not hearing audio. it? Oh, yeah, we've got, we've yeah. got sound. Okay. You hearing it now, Matthew? No. Please note. No, Those no, responses are okay. okay. upon okay. review and not in real time. As always, we do not offer this video as irrefutable evidence of the paranormal, nor do we claim our annotations are 100% conclusive. All we're asking is that you please approach cool, the data presented here with a curious mind <laughs> and that you wear damn headphones. Oh, I'd be headphones. freaking myself out. Gotta really pick apart. It's a good pair of headphones. Get you a long way, sir. Okay, Crump Theater. Here reverse we go. Speech audio. Shout out Columbus, the Indiana. What? That was a replay. Who's the person that touches people down here? Colonel Keith. Colonel Keith. Ah. Bro, <laughs> don't say it. So is this what in the basement? On, what did he say? I was yeah. drunk. I was drunk. Basement. This is in the basement of the Crump Theater. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Get out. Oh, my. It was me. Who was down there with you? Uh, my friend Mike and my friend Lindsay. Okay. I worked with quite a bit. 
What'd she say? Can you tell me where, where we are now? Crump. Mm-hmm. I did. Colonel. Wow. Geo box. Oh, Post. Do you have any other messages for us? Worship the devil? Satan? Hold on. Let's hit pause. Let's hit pause there for a second. What? So where? Let's talk yeah, about first of all. Amazing. Where was that at? Uh, what Post location? Town Elementary. Okay. Uh, Post Town Elementary is wow. uh, just north of Cincinnati, and uh, I was I was there with uh, my buddy Mike, who's a retired chief of detectives, and some okay. other friends of ours. And, and I, uh, I I set up the the box, and I was just asking questions, and all of a sudden it said, you know, I was like, "Do you have any other messages?" And it told us to worship the devil i was like what i mean that you was know, pretty it, incredible so what's the background on yeah. the elementary school is it defunct is it is it just abandoned yeah, it, 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 it's closed i mean there's no real this another one of those locations that doesn't have like a real reason why it's yeah. haunted uh except there was a big um one of the like worst train accidents in history there's mm-hmm. a train track right behind the school and there was a massive train uh, accident there and a lot of people died and they used part of that property and part maybe part of the school is like you know triage and so forth so uh, a lot of people try to associate the train wreck with like the hauntings at the school and but it's very active i mean we had a door slam on while we were there we had I actually went there one time with Ryan uh, Singer. We uh, the first time we worked together was in Post Town, so it's kind of a bonkers. Uh, actually, he's there tonight, which is kind of funny. Um, uh, so it's kind of a yeah, a crazy, crazy little spot. So yeah, that's where that happened at. And this next device that you're getting ready to see is called a, an Orion speaker or talker, and it, it was made by one of the only female ITC builders in um, in uh, the the field. And it's uh, basically like a phonetic generator, so um, it's it's basically like a hack speaking spell. And so, anyway, go ahead and play. Thank you, Star. Can you say goodbye? Look at that thing. I don't That's want cool. you to end. Yeah. So th- that device. The uh, um, it's it's really hard to listen to that particular phonetic generator because it it doesn't stop. Right. So the review of it was just, you know, pretty crazy. But uh, um, that was me just testing it out. But the, the, the next one actually had a Frank. Do you have any other messages song. for us? That was that one from earlier. Can you say goodbye? I don't want to end. Oh, I heard it. Yeah, that's creepy. So this is... It's so what color is my shirt? Yellow. What color is yellow? The color yellow, but you couldn't even help them? Yellow. For the record. <laughs> There's the yellow shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, baby. For all of our listeners, he just put the camera around on himself and he was wearing a yellow shirt. He was shirt. wearing a yellow shirt. That yeah. was interesting. Okay, Proctor this is Cemetery. Henry, where did Cemetery? Meet you at? Oh. Look at these. Where boxes. did we meet? Oh. Henry, where did Tunnelton. Tunnelton. <laughs> right in Tunnelton. Tunnelton. Big tunnel. A big tunnel. So if we could stop real quick, that particular clip uh, where I was asking, you know, where did we meet and so forth? Uh, I had it, like an attachment that followed me around for about three years. There's a famous haunted location here in Indiana, uh, and it's called the Big Tunnel. And there was a, a guy that was murdered in that tunnel, and his name was Henry Dixon. And for about three years, no matter where I went, um, I would ask for like a name, and it would say Henry Dixon. And I'd be like, it got to be like, dude, I'm, I'm trying to do something else. 
You know, why, why are you still with me? Why are you talking to me? And, and I had so many clips. Yeah. And I, I couldn't figure it out. So when I was in my backyard with that yellow shirt, it was during COVID and I was just, you know, messing with this Frank's box that I just got. And it started saying Henry Dixon again. And I finally was like, okay, Henry, tell me, tell me what you need. And I got this message that said, take me to her. And I didn't really know what that meant, but um, a friend of mine that helps me with my research, he found out where Henry Dixon's wife was buried. And I thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, I'm supposed to give him a, an Uber ride to where his wife is buried. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that he was buried there too. And so that clip, you know, I was validating that I was talking to Henry again. He was telling me where, like he did on multiple occasions, where we met Tunnelton in the big tunnel. And I was, thanked by a male voice and a female voice. And I was like, is there anything else that I could, I can do? And I was told to never come back. I was like, peace out, Girl Scout. You'll never, you'll never wow. hear from me again. Yeah. And I've never heard from Henry Dixon since. And it was so funny that day I was loading up these boxes and I was getting in my Jeep and my wife was like, where are you going? I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> God. <laughs> so Old yeah, Henry that was, Dixon. Uh, I love yeah, it. I love crazy, it. Crazy story. Yeah, I love it. And because I've never felt like I, I'm into like spirit rescue work, and I really question the right. validity of it. Yeah. so many people sure. like crossing spirits over into the light. Right. And I'm like, I, I'm just trying to like, I'm a yeah. journalist, you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to like document stuff. Right. And right. then for me to have this experience was like really wild for me personally. Right. Yeah. I mean, wow. it's cliche, but I have to say, it, like the whole six. You're not trying the to movie, be Lorraine Warren. The film, the Bruce Willis. Yeah. When that film came out, I remember like yeah. one friend of mine would be like, "Oh, well, that was a predictable ending." To me, it wasn't. It, it totally caught me off guard of what was going oh, on. But like, that's horseshit. It did. Yeah, it did for me. But whatever. What I'm saying is, I thought it was interesting that basically his job was like he is like an afterworld therapist. Right. Yeah. Like that's what yeah. he turns out to be. Like he continues doing his job in the after, but yeah. doesn't realize that's what he's mm -hmm. doing. Um, yeah. but he's doing that part with, but that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe you actually are like, what, who knows, who knows at those levels of like, what, what is going on Would they, what did they need? Did they need you to acknowledge, yeah. to give them enough to say, don't come back here anymore. Now I'm good. Okay, great. You My got what you is, needed is that you're actually getting yeah stuff i mean it's hard some of the words are hard to pick out the fact that you're getting anything coming through those that sound like a word at all is very fascinating to me mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah like yeah i don't know especially the, the frank's box i mean that device is probably made like in you know 2004 or something like that i mean it's pretty rough sounding compared to some of the newer devices that i have as well yeah. um but yeah, it's and that that's why the audio review, even though the the benefit with trying to experiment with these ITC devices, I mean the whole purpose is for like real time communication. That's yeah. what you're trying to achieve. And you still miss so much in the moment because when I go back and listen to audio, I'm like, holy cow, how did I miss that? Um, versus like EVP, which is all based upon like review later, you know, but right. with your recorders and so forth. So, you know, you're trying to have a conversation is 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 the goal so that's a good point i didn't i never thought about that with evps of it being a hundred percent you're not you don't know that's happening in the moment there's no yeah. way to do anything to react back because mm -hmm. once it's recorded you're going to listen to it later yeah there's no way to interact yeah. in the moment so sure. these devices yeah. it feels like you've got this open line of this telephone call you're, you're that's the what you're trying to achieve essentially in theory uh this next clip you guys is really pretty disturbing it's uh uh echo vox is the, the one of the softwares that's a phonetic generator and we were in a location called the eagle 501 or it used to be called the eagle 501 and have you guys ever heard of her baumeister that was the serial killer he was yeah. famous for like Fox Hollow Farm. Yeah. And they also felt like he was the I-70 Strangler. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Uh, so he was a married guy that he would send his wife and kids out of town and he'd go to gay bars yep. and pick up men 
and take him back to his house and, you know, get him drunk and he'd get him in his pool and they'd fool around and he'd choke him out, playing a game and basically kill them. And he's possibly attributed. They've, I think now they've identified like nine of his victims, but if he's truly the I-70 strangler too, we're looking like a, a victim count of like almost 50 people. Mm -hmm. And he used to go back and forth between Indianapolis and Columbus, Ohio, actually is yeah. uh, why he called it the I-70 strangler. Mm -hmm. And the murder stopped uh, right after her bought the house that was called Fox Hollow Farm. Well, a friend of mine bought this, uh, uh, there was this old gay bar downtown Indianapolis and was remodeling it and they were having all these haunted experiences. And so we started going into uh, the this building and we found out that yeah. Herb, this is where he used to troll his victims and, and, and try to pick them up. And so this was uh, one of the Dahmer people. In the, uh, the <laughs> Dude, I almost yeah. said that earlier. Calmer and Dahmer. I almost said that earlier. <laughs> you can't do that. Dahmer and Dahmer. Jeez, Were you a victim of herbs? Dahmer. He would take people back to his house and, and have erotic asphyxiation and sex, and he'd kill them. Does that ring a bell? I'm a victim. Look up. Look up. Get help. Get parents. Get parents. Whoa. Okay. A lot happening on. there. I'm a victim of herbs. Look up. Look, look up, get, get help, help, get parents. Get parents. Yeah, that's creepy. Out there. Out there. Yeah. So, I mean, these are probably like reaching out to get the parents closure, closure of some families. kind. It's where the yeah. way I take that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's, go get that's help. Toxic. Go tell people that, hey, we're the victims. We're, we've been killed by herbs. I mean... I mean, it's difficult to hear at some points, but I mean, it does. I mean, the more and more we're going down this path, this is, it's interesting shit. Oh, yeah. It's very, very, very interesting. But, you know, I would well, love to come and hang out with Matthew and see one of these things in, in person. I think that'd be like the ultimate of like for me to really, really tap into this. Like, I, I just I would love to see one of these in action. I do. Well, in these. Yeah, and the, these short clips, you know, especially with like the ghost boxes, you uh, when you're in a, a room and you're doing a session, you get used to the sound of the sweep. Yeah. So you hear the device and, and doing, so you recognize a lot of times when something different happens because it usually when you hear a response, it's harder with the phonetic generators, but through like the ghost boxes, the uh, usually the responses are kind of divorced from the the audio that you'd been hearing at the time mm -hmm. so these short clips you don't really get like what it's like sitting there in the moment uh but when you're actually doing the session you know when something pops off it really does get your attention that's wild oh yeah yeah oh, Meister, dude i 70 strangler I know probably and a little bit too much about serial killers. I'm not going to lie. I know a decent amount. I know a little. I'm I not know. like obsessed, but I know enough. I know probably a little bit about mostly all the fairly famous serial killers. I like those documentaries. I mean, Mindhunter. Yeah. Mindhunter's great. Mindhunter's Never great brought show. it back for season three. It pissed me off. I think it just freaked too many people out. Probably. Yeah. The, uh, the there, there was another serial killer that picked up. Uh, guys at the 501 bar two. His name was Larry, Larry something. And uh, he used an ice pick. Uh, uh, well, one of his victims survived uh, being abducted by this guy and testified how, you know, when he was tied up, pretending to be passed out, how there's an ice pick laying right there. Like he knew what was going to happen. And uh, through that whole e uh, ITC session that we did there in the bar, I mean, we got ice pick as mm. they replied. I knew nothing about the the Larry guy, the other serial killer, um, you know, and we, you know, got Fox Hollow Farm. I mean, we got all kinds of relevant responses that were just pretty hard to dismiss. And it's not like, 
you know, that device wasn't connected to the internet or like going through our personal Google searches or, or anything like that to be able to even locate us where we're at to, you know, like some inner workings, like backdoor in the app that's like tricking us. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah. Again, I there mean, you go, trying to be so damn rational about right. you know investing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> that was one of. I yeah. love it. That's perfect. Yeah, is there any way for anybody to influence that? Like, is, is it? Any, you know what I mean? Compromised? Is it tainted? Is yeah. it a good sample? That's right. Yeah, I love it. And, and, and that's why, it's like weird. that, that particular app has, uh, like I said, there's no words to it. Where a lot of the apps, the ghost hunting apps, are just like MP3 word banks. With and they pick up spooky words that you know, and they sound creepy, and they just kind of freak you out. For this one, you know, people have like ripped the hood off of this app, and they know exactly how it was made, and that's why I feel confident when I've used that app. And you know, uh, the first time I used it, I let it run for like three days without interacting with it. I never heard one word besides like maybe some real simple stuff like cat. Or, you know, you know, something like that, you would might pop through. But uh, it was when I took it to Step Cemetery, which is a known haunted spot here in the state of Indiana, I got a full phrase that said, you people stop asking questions. And so after listening to it for, you know, so many hours and then interacting with it and getting that type of response, I mean, in the moment I, I heard it did something different, you know, so it, it takes a minute to kind of uh, tune your ear yeah. to, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah That's what I said. Like being that. there and having more input and an understanding of like, like you said, how it's sweeping and getting <laughs> used to being able to pick out certain things while it's happening. Uh, yeah. I'm totally into it. I mean, I'll well, just sage and do a little protection ceremony, <laughs> of course, like I always <laughs> need to. Um, yeah, well, just like Stay in the basement of the crump, the basement of the crump, the reverse speech, Colonel Keith, the crump. I mean, those those are super clean. That you know? was so clean, bro. Every every box kind of has its own different personality and sound. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly playing with different ones, trying to you know, uh, I'm trying to give some exposure to the builders because they're super creative. Do you, do you ever but, run multiple boxes at once? Different boxes that are running different schemes that's or what you different. Say he was doing in the cabin. He's yeah, in the cabin I'm... session. Oh, sorry if I missed that earlier again. Yeah, and you'll you'll hear some of the cabin sessions. They are freaky dicky. You guys will dig them. So yeah. well, and I, I gotta say, before I forget about it too, you said something earlier. It was really interesting. Was was it the guy that started EVP recordings or this or that? It was about birds. Uh -huh. and he was ended up getting. I swear, was that one of the Guillermo del Toro Cabinet of Curiosity things with the bird episode where they're recording the sound of those starlings, but then they're in the house and it's like it turns into like. Oh my God, it was. I wonder if he was almost taking a I little bit of the founder was. of the EVP and pulling yes. that apart and like Dude. putting that story in that way. Because when you said it. And like, this is the Cabinet <laughs> of Curiosity. I wanted to say it earlier because it started <laughs> freaking me out and I was like. You'd like to think that all these things are sci-fi, but people are taking real things maybe and they're yeah. kind of weaving them and, 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 and imbuing that lore and mm -hmm. culture further because it, my brain just started alarming. I was like, oh, I think I've heard something like this or I've seen something like this. So I've not watched that. Now I'm going to have to go watch that. Oh, my gosh. Great, you'll love it. Dude, it's so good. You will yeah. love it. It is absolutely brilliant. It's fun. Okay. It's a so lot good. of fun. Yep. There's like, uh, I don't know how many episodes. And they're all different directors. Episodes. Guillermo has one of them, but for the most mm -hmm. part, it's all different writers and, and creators and filmmakers yep. for each episode is different. Maybe Guillermo does too. Oh. It's, you, I think you'll like it. But yeah, let me know what you think on that one. Yeah, well. Yeah, and we want to hop in more of these. I these do. Are, this yeah. got my interest yeah. peaked. You got me going. Right, this is another box of the reverse speech in the Scott County, County Poor Farm in uh, Indiana, so... It's like a museum. You have a favorite uh, favorite item in this room? Are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm trying to. Have you been listening to me? Get out of this. You still get out then? <laughs> get out of this conversation? <laughs> you not like this conversation? Don't want it. Don't want it? Please. Please? Please. Well, if you want me to turn it off, I will. I'll be respectful like that. Yeah. 
Do you, you want me to turn it off? What? Turn it off. What? Turn off. Go- All right. Oh, All right, well, thank you for talking to us. Turn off. Turn off. Goodbye. Wow. Matthew. Bro, you got called out, okay. sir. Okay, so basically... <laughs> What that just made me think of was See, like those ghost, Bumblebee communicating. Those kind of boxes, I can hear a lot clearer. That, I whatever, love that, that box. whatever was going on there, that box was it was using it's radio stations. Interesting as hell. See what I mean by conversational? Yeah, yeah that's that. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, wow. Or yeah. Do you? Get- and we were in a room. We we were in a room called the military room, and it was surrounded by all these, uh, you know, artifacts from different uh, veteran who's who's your veterans. And so I was like, you know, trying to get like an item in the room that somebody wanted to talk about. And they just didn't want to talk to me, period. So, yeah, I went down. Get out of my face, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I'm just chilling. You're bugging me. (laughs) That's great. Yeah, I think the next clip is from the same place using a different box, but still reverse speech. Who, who are you speaking to? This is a ghost by chance. There's many. Yeah. Wow. Oh, here we go. Cabin yeah. sessions. Wow. <laughs> What's the future of mankind? Wakanda? Mankind is exhausting. No place. It's exhausting. What is the truth? Wow. What? From demons. What's the future of mankind? Wow, isn't that true? Mankind is exhausted. No place. Yeah. It's exhausted. What is the truth? That's wild. Jesus. Some demon. Well, demons really just want you dead so they can just take your soul. So, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you're exhausted. Just go ahead and be just a lay down and, and jump off the yeah. cliff. We got you, bud. Lay in this sweet bed. I will be here for you. I, I thought that was one of the most profound That's responses creepy. I forgot. Mankind and that and the weird thing about it, throughout the cabin sessions that I was doing for that series, I kept getting that really deep voice over and over again. And I jokingly started calling him Deep Throat. And I would like ask, I would ask for him, you know, like, you know, <laughs> where's he at, man? <laughs> but That's uh, awesome. yeah, the the uh the the cabin sessions even gets weirder. You guys you're gonna you're gonna get a big kick out of it. Oh my. It's 11 11. Yeah. And this is like, once again, all the. Can you tell me what, where you're from? Are you from Sirius? No. No. Yes. Procyon? Save this planet. What about Bigfoot or Sasquatch? <laughs> if Sasquatch is real, everything is. Everything is what? Everything is real? <laughs> Except Bigfoot? What? Okay. <laughs> What? What? It no, was. no, no. Bigfoot's right. got to be real, right? Now I know there's trickster ghosts and porter guys and demons. <laughs> man. They're just trying to mess hey. with us. Yeah. I can't. Uh, listen, man. Let me see if I can show you guys That's this. amazing. That's it. I feel Everything is real except, except Bigfoot. Bigfoot. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> there's one. Is that Bigfoot in his underwear? Uh, there we go. It's like a... Oh, it's it's pulling off your screen. There. Put it right in front of your shirt. Let's yeah. see if it does it. All right. It's like a dress-up. There you go. Bigfoot. 
That's hilarious. Yeah. Dress up Bigfoot. And, <laughs> and I, I felt like, you know, because I kept asking about Bigfoot throughout my, my uh, cabin sessions, that they just were trolling me hard anytime I'd bring up anything right. about Bigfoot. Yeah. So they're and, trolling you. Uh, they're having fun with you. Because Bigfoot is. Oh, yeah. Weird. I don't give a damn what that ghost says. You know? yeah, and you're not going to see you're not going to see it in these clips, but at the end of every cabin session, I'd also draw like three tarot cards and I'd lay them on the table face down. So, and I would try, I would ask them what the cards were, hmm. and and then I'd flip them over to see if I got a corresponding, um, you know, uh, answer because I was trying to take like my mind out of the anticipated answer that I wanted to hear. I didn't want to know the answer either, just to see if there was any like you know, way that they could see into the future or, or, you know, predict things or anything like that. So I had a lot of success with, you know, the tarot card flip. And also I would do a die roll and it got to where I was at the end of my cabin sessions where they would be like, so tired of the questions. They would say, play cards, roll yeah. dice. I mean, they, they were like over it. Like, like, we want to play the game. We don't want to answer your lame ass questions. Right. I mean, it right. really became bizarre. That's interesting yeah. as hell. Yeah. Right. So. Let's. Is there more of these cabins? As watches, dimensional yeah. beings or flesh and blood, <laughs> aliens. Stop, Stop asking. asking. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. tired. Yeah. Come on. Are aliens real? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Aliens yeah. visit us. Yes. Are aliens interdimensional? Are aliens from other planets? Another? from Jupiter? Other dimensions. Oh, other dimensions. Oh, shit. Another? So aliens from another dimension. What is the yeah, I mean, that's what I'm always felt. <laughs> I mean, this is wild. Maybe the dude you were talking about earlier who was trying There's to make no this Bigfoot. Stuff. He said no. So I, they, they really are hating on Bigfoot, man. Bigfoot done pissed him off. <laughs> oh my god, bro! He's this taking a lot of heat. Hila- these ghosts are hilarious. Squats oh, take a lot I mean, of heat, bro. Has Ryan freaking... Singer ever been with you? It was, I mean, he dude, gets I mean, some dope jokes from these ghosts. Jesus. <laughs> well, you know, part of this is, is Ryan's fault because the time I told you I met him at Post Town, I thought we were like, you know, just doing a ghost hunt together. Yeah. And I get there and I find out Ryan, he's, he wasn't interested in ghosts. He was there to talk to aliens. And oh, I was yeah. Like, I'll bet. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And yeah. So uh, the the whole like Sirius and Procyon, you know, the star systems that I brought mm-hmm. up in the cabin are a result of spending some time with Singer and some weird things that happened to us <laughs> in this post kind of country. So that's where oh a lot God. of that came from. That's nice. Cool. If you guys are into stand-up comedy, you need to go check out Ryan's special, The Supernatural. It was released last year. It's on YouTube. Yeah. And I don't know if he was touring with a new special when he when uh, you guys linked up and he was at the theater. But, dude, it is great. He has some unbelievable Bigfoot jokes. Um, yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything, yeah, but if you haven't there. seen it, you got to check it out because his podcast is great too. Me and Paranormal You, um, which yeah. I heard about from Burt Kreischer's show years ago, had Ryan Singer on and some of those guys, and he was talking about ghosts and Bigfoot, and I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? This is <laughs> this isn't like most stand up comedians aren't into it's not the strange their role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. love it. Um, yeah, cross pollinate that stuff. It's interesting. <laughs> all this, this sync. I didn't do a very good job of how all this synced up, but it's blowing my mind. You might not need to. Yeah, it'll just play itself out. It'll it'll cool. unfold before everybody. Oh my god, that's hilarious! God, those cabin sessions are rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, are I, aliens I, I, real? Would, yeah, I, like yeah. questions like that. I was not expecting that. That was amazing. This is so cool. no. 
nobody was mo- more surprised by how the, these cabin sessions turned out than I was. I was just like, what is going on? And I, and I would, you know, miss some of the responses. I go back and review and I was just like, crack up. Like, is this, is this really happening? And, you know, my wife, she is such a big skeptic and my son, he's very academic in the way he thought and he thinks. And of course, you know, my wife, she refuses to acknowledge any of this that she hears, but my son, he'd listen to it and he'd be like, yeah, holy shit! They're talking about Bigfoot. They're this is they're really talking about Bigfoot. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. I would love to hang out at your cabin and play with. Not play with though. I, it's not a toy. That's a tool, a tool for communication. Bub, I would love to hear the questions you ask. This oh, guy right here, Matthew. Would, yeah, he's got a creative, yeah. strange, strange mind. Uh, you would come up with some zingers. There's a lot of corn on that cob. Oh, yeah, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> oh Oh, shit i would not run shorter questions i think i would get the i think i would probably end up at the same juncture you did where they were like play dice (laughs) yeah play cards you You stop asking you stop asking for god's sakes with someone take this kid home yeah you would beat them to a i would i would want to know things I think this winter, I'm, when I do the cabin sessions, I'm going to make it just nothing but like casino style. I'm going to come up with just all kinds of fun little games to play mm-hmm. and see how that how that plays out. Because they seem, you know, if you go back and actually watch the cabin sessions, you'll see what I mean. Like they were like anticipating, you know, like that part, like the end was their favorite part, you know, where I'm trying to like figure out about the pyramids and Atlantis. And they're like, no, man. Let's roll dice. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. See, I would love yeah. to hear. I think that's hilarious that they're like, hey, don't worry. When you get here, you'll get all the knowledge. But what yeah. we don't have here is a freaking casino. So get the <laughs> dice going, baby. You know what I mean? It really reminds me of Literally. what people were doing with Edgar Casey, the sleeping yeah. prophet. Yeah, yeah. Except he's uh, just yeah. kind of directly talking to the, the spirits what if, on the other side. What if that's what he was doing? I, again, if I, that's where he was going and retrieving sure, his information was from kind of doing something like this was he was able to kind of drift back and forth between these two arenas waves. and go over and talk to the spirits and be like, hey, what's all happening? And this person has this. Qu- OK, and then but unbeknownst to him, like he's just the conduit, like whatever was being said to him was going yeah. in one ear, going over to the ether, getting the answer coming back out and he was spitting it out he had a lot of stuff on atlantis he had yeah, a he lot did. of stuff on yeah. the yucatan specifically what will talked about yeah uh, will from incredible history yeah um where he specifically has a book where edgar edgar casey just has readings on the yucatan on the border of i guess it's uh guatemala and mexico mm-hmm. and that specific area that he was obsessed with that they did an entire reading about how it was connected with Atlantis and the civilization that was there wasn't the Mayans. Yeah. And this is much, much, much more ancient civilization um, that is completely lost. Most of it's under the ocean, Mm -hmm. uh, but lost artifacts and things that um, people have been used over years as a roadmap to find lost artifacts, to find lost Mm -hmm. temples and civilizations. So, Hey, why not? Why not ask those things? I mean, hell, like, I would have never thought. I mean, that's my jam. That's brilliant. What? That's, yeah, I ask about the younger Dryas <laughs> impact. I asked them yes. about that. The, yes. uh, Kevin said, I mean, I, I tried to go down some rabbit holes, man. I mean, and I got into, like I said, the theological things. I ask about Jesus. I ask about demons. I ask about Satan. I ask about things that usually like paranormal investigators would be like terrified to even broach. But in, in my mind, it's like, I'm like I said, I'm throwing it all out there just to see, like, you know, if I ask about Satan, is my 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 cabin gonna blow up? Or right. if I talk about Jesus, is, are they gonna tell me to shut up? Or you know, you know what I mean? I was just like trying to like Do any you, trigger I could yeah. think of. Do you ever get nervous? Have you ever had a man, I I really did touch a nerve there, or I hit a live wire, or, you know, I it's shouldn't somebody. ask that question again. There were a few times where like I heard some pounding above my head and no one else was home. And then when I do the cabin sessions, I have these like, stupid fairy lights. that That's what gives it the red glow. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple times I asked questions and those fairy lights went real vibrant. And then like back down, I was like, holy cow, what the really? hell is that? A little power surge. Yeah, so, 
Wow. Yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, and they're not even plugged into the wall. They run off like, you know, AAA or AA batteries, right. mm-hmm. you know. Those right. little switch yeah. boxes. Yep. Man, I'm not yep. going to lie. You're ballsy. You, you, you are doing stuff where I would be, I would need a, I would need a buddy system or a spotter or some <laughs> kind of like, I'm going to need a Baku from earlier on. Baku, we were, you know, I'm going to need this mythological creature to eat all these nightmares from it. Yep. You need the you Baku know? by yourself. But, um, we need to get some Baku totem. Yeah. You're, keep, you're, a, we keep doing these paranormal episodes. Like I said, I've yeah. moved on from this stuff. So I thought, no, no. Lindsay, no, like Brisbane, Lindsay Brisbane comes in with yeah. her demonic haunting from Ken Ohio story and, and her Rekindled podcast. the fire. And boy, I've been on a tear, son. Of, That's what I'm saying. I'm back. Yeah. I'm in I it. I love it. And it's... I think it's a good avenue to look into. I don't want to, like, get anything just, coming home with me, but... I just felt too dark, too much darkness around. I was way too deep. I was way too deep into it. We don't need to go dark with it. We'll and keep it like what he's doing. No, with. this is great. This like is the that. stuff that I would love to explore. You know, I'm not trying to go into a demonic Comfortable. house. No. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to... No. I know that's there, but this that, stuff, that's why it, the technology it, just really... Yeah. Interest me. Uh, th- this is why uh, Scarab Box is important to me because I'm I'm trying to show the ITC is way bigger than what it's tried to be boxed into um, by like just ghost hunters yeah. and and I'm trying to explore these other you know concepts and just more interested in how consciousness might play into this. And, you know, if there's like a cosmic consciousness or it's uh, interdimensional phenomena that's able to, um, you know, observe and see us and but it's from an unknown origin. And to me, it's just it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, and who knows if that is a different, you know, uh, we talk about these different dimensions and I've never understood it so clearly as somebody showing it on a chalkboard of like, you know, drawing figures on a chalkboard and that dimension on a 2D and we're 3D and how we could pop in and out of a 2D existence with impunity and they could never tell what we're doing or how we did it. And if there's Mm -hmm. a 4D to our 3D and all this craziness of how when you start going into that and you start realizing like what you're saying is like, maybe it is, maybe there is another frequency or spectrum where we can tap into and get this information, but... You know, we kind of have to meet them on their grounds too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So that's what that's what this whole thing is about. It's attempting uh, to, to to connect and tie into all that. So I love it, yeah. dude. It's super rad. I really love your work. I love what you're doing. This is one of the most interesting shows we've done in a long time. Because I'm just like I thought I knew a lot of stuff about paranormal technology and what people are you i'm oh, way no. i realize way. that i'm not up on the upper <clears throat> upper cusp of that stuff anymore yeah well not with yeah with maybe never a was more necessarily with, but i mean i knew a little bit hunting tech yeah. but man this is incredible the, like i said you guys should go check out um and also too we didn't really shout out you know where we can find you and stuff like that your instagram your website and so forth and yeah. whatnot um but where people can can find these uh, these tools if they're interested in, uh, you know, paranormal research and or how, they, how they can get into how they it, can yeah. connect with you. Um, and, you know, we'd just love to know how, how, we, how can we can connect with you? Uh, well, there's paraholics.com. And from there, all my social media is, is there. And, you know, I always try to pair up like, you know, any, any location that I've been to that, you know, I have a video that I'm presenting, I always put all the research, historical stuff, everything like that, timelines on the blog. I don't, you know, go through all that in every single video and I like to write. So, uh, you know, I get a little wordy on there sometimes and, you know, I talk about issues in the paranormal and equipment and kind of, you know, delve into that type of thing too there. And, uh, also obscuravox.com is, I'm slowly getting uh, some stuff up on there, but that's where I'm primarily going to be like focused as far as like the ITC work, you know, from, from here on out. So uh, that, and I'm, ha- I have, you know, social media connected to Obscuravox as well. So it's, it's all going to be on that site. And if anybody be interested in like any of the devices that I have, 
Um, you know, I can't promise anyone they would ever be able to get their hands on a Frank's box because they're pretty rare. And like I said, Frank has passed away. But uh, as far as like the other devices, if there was something that somebody was interested in, I would definitely be able to hook them up with the builder and, you know, they could try to, you know, work that out. So um, that, that wouldn't be a problem either. So people more than, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about any of the devices. So fantastic very cool man beautiful yeah. um is there any last words you can leave our audience with matthew um you know i always say to let your uh um let, let your uh wonder light your wander you know just stay curious uh and don't be satisfied with what anybody's ever filled your head with you know just keep asking questions and uh you know who knows what adventure it might might lead you to so um, just have fun with with uh, your time here, and I think a lot of the existential stuff will be answered once we have died. And so, be be cool now, and and try to have a good time, and and stay stay open minded. Dude, beautiful. Yeah, I dig all that. Matthew Jackson, everybody, aka Evil Ogleville. Much Freaking love, amazing. my man. This was hey. an awesome, awesome show. Uh, again, we're gonna come back and chat with you. Bub and I are gonna outro the show, uh, but we'll come back and wrap it up. Uh, but we're awesome. going to. Uh, uh, I'm gonna lose a little bit of sleep maybe tonight, but <laughs> hopefully, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely be Palo Santo, a little sage. Um, you know, when we do these episodes, I like, to, like the, to clear it up a little, you know, it's just, that's all good. Feeling the vibe. Yeah. Um, so definitely wipe your chakras, man. Wipe your chakras. <laughs> Gotta get them. I need some crystal bells and crystal bowls. Love it. Um, hell yeah, man. Thank you so much again, Matthew. You're the best. Much love. Hey, thank that you. Was man. So you much <laughs> yeah, thank you, dude. Hell yes. Oh man. Once again. Yeah. I don't know. We keep Rabbit out of the hat. We keep the show going, and then people like Matthew... Rabbit out of the hat. Just somehow my brother John... <laughs> Dude. I just love how... I can just I see him. How he this big guy's just hovering around. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see him. Oh uh, my god, dude! The funny thing is, I I never met John until six years ago. A lot of we didn't really talk about it on the show, but uh, you know, I was yeah. adopted when I was six weeks old, and John was five years old when I was adopted. He remembers me, but I never met him until like five, six years ago. Yeah, and uh, Wild, boy, so. he's been an amazing force in my life. He's an incredible human being. He's he's absolutely killing it, and he's. Um, you know, loves what we're doing down here and, and is one of our Appreciate biggest it. supporters of, of Appreciate it. Uh, everything that, you know, since I met, I have two two brothers and two sisters, but they are very, very supportive of what we're doing. And it's just another sync up. It's wild, isn't it? Yeah. It's love wild. It. It's wild. <laughs> You're like, my brother, John, actually. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> None of this makes sense He's again. So like it just doesn't. Dude. But that's what we got to take as we keep going forward. Is like, <sighs> but what? What's funny is we're finding sense in the nonsensical now. Like we're finding that's the synchronicities scary. in all the craziness that's happening. Yeah, and that's the really interesting part. It's almost like you're in the eye of the tornado, and you're like, but that links up with this over here because you're in this giant whirlwind. Like that's yeah. what's happening. It's really fun, but I think we're now starting to able to like slow down and we can process what's going on a little bit and we can make those connections a little bit clearer because it does just add a little bit more of a layer of you know why we do this yeah i mean like bowser said you know what i mean taking little beads and one day we're gonna pull it up around our necks and we're gonna have a necklace yeah so yep we'll end on that yep you guys can find us at the strange road on instagram tiktok and twitter you rock the strange road facebook group is rocking and rolling five stars hit us up there review please if you guys haven't reviewed please do you it really Write really haiku. Does it. It doesn't and have I, to be that I've long i've been trying not to beg but i'm begging damn it but here's the thing too you got to go to either <laughs> apple you got to go to apple podcast yes. or you got to go to spotify podcast and it's all the way down at you. the bottom it's not that easy to find either guys so i totally understand and, it's work and it, it is a thing and now spotify is easy it's right there boom you hit it you hit a five star don't even write a message i don't care but on Apple, you got to scroll all the way underneath Bottom on our page, yep. and there it is, and that's where you can review. But and you got to feed the robots. Got to feed the robots. We got to feed the robots so that we can 
keep talking about yeah. all this craziness. Yeah, we got to keep, keep the lights doing on this week here. after week. ET is going to be homeless, damn it. <laughs> Look at this guy. Intergalactic. E- you intergalactic e. panhandler ET. <laughs> E.T. He's a good guy. Needs to keep his home. Oh, no. He's staring me down. All right. Easy. Yeah. Watch where you're pointing All that right. finger. It might be loaded. All right. We're going to wrap it up. you the uh, best. Like, subscribe, share. You guys know what to do. Uh, once again, thank you to Disboro and Stoner and Master Control. Always holding it down. And thank you to everybody out there in the chat listening. You guys rule. Uh, and once again, thank you to Matthew Jackson. He crushed it. Oh, so much fun. And we're going to keep bringing the heat, bringing the fire. Much love. Peace, love. And chicken grease. We're out. Later, y'all.